everybody. Welcome to the Emmy Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant. I must be Alan Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Live and in person in the house. Well, you're waiting for that Skype delay. That's what that, that was. Yeah, I was, I was used to the disconnect, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the home of, the, uh, of Karen Bryant. It's a lovely home. Oh, thanks. Here. Yeah, I was telling Alan when he got here that um, we already consider a family because we didn't clean up. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Ouch. You know, and then it's funny because it, when people come over, that's when you're like, all right, you know, there's a baseline. It's okay. And then I looked over. I was like, I really need to dust they that. They didn't do a didn't single really thing didn't for dust me. that. Nope. The dog was jumping on me. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So listen, um, you know, we're uh, we're glad that you could make it here in person today. This is very nice. And uh, uh, I saw you just the other day. We went out to Sakes on uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. You were putting in some serious work. And you just came down from Black House? Right? Came from Black House, did a little wrestling. I go Monday, Wednesdays, yeah. Fridays as well. So. Because as a reminder, you have a fight coming up on? August 19th, Brisbane, Australia. August 19th. March 19th. March 19th. Dude, I was like, wow. March 19th. Someone took it to the oh, Maybe I'll fight morning. August as well. <laughs> Actually, August 19th. It was a good wrestling practice today, as you can see. My head's a little, <laughs> mine's a little joggled. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, the things that went down at UFC on Fox, which saw Anthony Rumble Johnson victorious again. Uh, ben, uh, ben Rothwell took out Josh Barnett. So we'll get into that. We'll also talk about Sage Northcutt. And there's, you know, there's a lot of backlash, obviously, uh, on the fact that he lost. And we'll get into that whole debacle. It's really interesting, the whole UFC 196 thing that went down. And as a fighter, for you, I'm curious to hear your opinion on uh, fighting with injuries and all that stuff. So so we will get to that. But yeah, you, uh, some of the guys we saw out at the gym the other day, they won their fights this weekend, right? Yeah, man. I had we had. I, I was at a Pachanga Casino yeah. this weekend, cornering guys for Lions Fight. Lions Fight's uh, the premier American Muay Thai yeah. uh, organization. So a lot of great fights. I had two of my teammates, Brian Del Vizario and Spencer Mix. They did great on their mm-hmm. card. Also, um, another uh, uh, fellow Epoch, who's my yep. management company, Tiffany Von Sous. Yeah, she uh, defended her bomb. title. She nice. Time bomb. She looked excellent. She actually gained her second belt. Uh, and a two-way two-way categories now, so she's she's pretty much looking unstoppable, man. It's exciting yeah. to see where she wants to go. She's yeah. such an athletic girl, but she's kind of reached the pinnacle of Muay Thai for yeah, women's Muay yeah, Thai. Sure. So I'm curious right. to see where she goes from here. Oh, we'll see. Well, I tell you what, let's get right into it. We got round one going on here now, and we are going to talk about, uh, like I said, Rumble Johnson. So, so here's the thing. Uh, mm. I think pretty much everybody figured Rumble by knockout going yeah. into this. Was that your pick on this? I, I did have Rumble. I did have Rumble uh, winning. And obviously, you think if he's going to win Rumble, probably the chances of winning by knockout is pretty heavy. I did, however, think that it was going to take longer. Here's the thing. You know, I know Ryan Bader for a long time, DC, liked to bust on him and call him the easiest fight in the division. And Ryan is one of those guys who I feel like hasn't gotten the respect that he was he was due. He beat a lot of very good people. And, you know, there was that fluke loss to, to Tito that time, that fluke choke. And, but he beat, you know, he beat uh, Rashad Evans recently. And, you know, Ryan has definitely beat some quality people. And so I, I, I expected more of a fight. I, I did think Rumble would win, but I expected Ryan to put up uh, a little bit more of a fight. Did you, did you imagine it was going to end as quickly as it did? Because that was first round. That was what I feel like it was a minute and 26 seconds or something like that. Absolutely not. <laughs> it caught me completely by the, the yeah. surprise. The thing with DC, you mentioned DC yeah. was calling out Ryan Bader, the easiest fight in the division. That's just two guys trying to get in each other's head. Yeah. <laughs> DC knows that Ryan Bader is a very tough fight for anyone. Yeah. The thing that Ryan Bader has shown throughout his career, though, and I really feel bad for the guy because he gets on these winning sprees where he'll go four or five mm-hmm. wins against top-level components. But once he hits that pinnacle, that, that, that top echelon of the yep. one, number one, two, three, or four, he always has a stumble. And the thing that's hurt him in his career is th- these stumbles haven't been – three round wars or right. close decisions he's somewhat in a way gotten i don't want to say embarrassed mm-hmm. but he's got put away pretty easily yeah and that's what's hurt him uh with, with the fans with the ranking system with them giving him a shot mm-hmm. is the way that he's lost throughout his career so it's tough for him to 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 be on a, a four or five fight yeah. win streak uh, streak coming into this fight and then they get taken out so easily by, by rumble johnson He's going to have a long road to get back to the top again. Yeah, and I don't know if, you know, at this point in his career, if he is, and I know, I don't, you know, you don't want to call somebody a journeyman and you don't want to call somebody a gatekeeper, but at a certain point in your career, 
that's what people become, whether they want to be or not. And Ryan, I think, is still a very tough fight for a lot of people. But that was probably his last best shot if we're talking about how old he is. I mean, like you're talking about the way he loses when he was fighting Glover to share. We, I, I, this is one of my favorite examples of, <laughs> you know, why defense is so important. If you remember, he's fighting Glover to share and he's like, I'm winning. I'm winning. I am knocked out, <laughs> you know, and that was the whole thing of just being being aware in the moments. And I think that's what it is, is sometimes he gets a little bit ahead of himself and then loses that composure. And he said of this fight, um, <laughs> meanwhile, people are missing this. <laughs> Our dog is <laughs> just going <laughs> all over the place Having right now. Ball. We should probably bring her in at some point. Uh, but so he said in this that he said um, – that that wasn't the strategy to go in there and shoot right away on Rumble, right? So he said that the strategy uh, was to go in there, stick and move, you know, and everybody likes to think that Rumble can't go long, so to, to, to maybe take him longer. But he said what he did is he intended to kind of fake for the shoot and come up with, I think he said, a left upper uppercut, um, but Rumble caught him. <laughs> Rumble, Rumble just took him down. So then he said, he's like, well, I'm there, and I had his arm, and I thought maybe I could work something here and at least get out of it, and then it was over. It's, it's always easier said than done, and it's always yeah. easier to game plan and strategize and then to do it actually in the cage. Right. And, and, and like you said, he probably went in there with the intention to face some shots, yes. throw some hands, set up the takedown, but it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It, it was exactly a, a failed attempt at a, a Randy Couture versus James Tony, where <laughs> Randy Couture didn't want anything to do with James no. Tony's hands. He shot in for an ankle pick from about five feet away, yeah. but was heavily successful because James Tony had no wrestling, nothing. had no MMA experience, had nothing at all. You're going against Anthony Rumble Johnson, yeah. who they said he's wrestled collegially, maybe not at the highest levels, but he's wrestled collegially. He's been fighting MMA for a good 10 years now. Yeah. He knows how to, and, and his, Rashad Evans is one of his main sparring mm -hmm. partners. So he's always shooting. He's always working on his wrestling. He, uh, as he said before, during his camp, he's got a new wrestling coach yep. and it's been paying a lot of dividends for him. Um, Ryan Bader, maybe that's what it was. Maybe he intentionally he wanted to fake the shot and he found himself over committed to it mm -hmm. and so he had to just go for it. But he he shot from way too far to range. And Ryan, he, it was a mistake. He knows better than that. He's a better fighter than that. He's a better wrestler than that. He made a mistake and the mistakes continued. Like you said, he held yep. on to the to the arm, let uh, Rumble Johnson advances position mm -hmm. and he finds himself in the worst possible position against a heavy puncher. When they're mounted and they have your head against the cage, there's, it, there's nowhere to go. That's <gasps> death. That's God. death against a heavy puncher and that That's, was the end of the fight. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll keep going here and, and round two. I do need a beverage. So here's my thing. Do you drink Do you drink the fruity water? I mean, you're a <laughs> I, I, They say that lemon and strawberries are good. I yeah. don't know. Do you not? Uh, I just drink the water. Just regular water? Yeah, I drink, do you I drink, drink the, fruit and water. Do you drink, do you drink the <laughs> alkaline, uh, the neutral water? Yeah, yeah you know, um, Black House used to have one of those machines. Uh, is it alkaline? Yeah, it's machine? alkaline. Yeah, and now it's broken. So, um, Ed Soares, um, Get on it. somebody, I mean, I guess maybe I need to win some more fights too, but <laughs> Machida, somebody, you know, they, yeah. they're doing better than me, so um, maybe they there. can step up and offer one for the gym, and, okay? And represent, yeah, well, I, you know, <laughs> hey, it's, it's Ask a Fighter here uh, on the podcast. So, okay, so let's uh, roll through here on, into round two, and I, always, I still wanted to talk about Rumble and this whole yeah. situation mm -hmm. at the top now. Um, you know, DC obviously is going to be fighting John Jones, and they should be making that announcement any second now or whatever. So DC has said that he will fight John Jones twice. You know, he believes he's going to win, and that they'll have that immediate rematch, and they'll go for that for that rubber match. So. <laughs> Rumble at this point, there, there's nobody else. There's nobody else who should be in the position to be challenging. But what do you do with Rumble if he knows that, if that's true? Let's say DC gets that gets that win. Uh, so how soon could they put? So Rumble maybe wouldn't get a title shot till what the end of the year, and that's being aggressive, saying that DC and John fought in like April and a rematch is in August or something. I don't know they can really do that. It, it puts Rumble in a tight spot exactly yeah. right now because he needs, if I'm him, I'm thinking I need to play the waiting game. Mm -hmm. um, I need to see, first off, when they announce this fight between DC yeah. and John Jones, which I would suspect would have to be UFC 200? Well, no, well, it was going to be, uh, it was going to probably be the Madison Square Garden thing in April. Oh, okay, so that, but another, now we know another that, great we one now, in Rome. Well, come on, but we know that the New York thing is not happening. Do so is it not? Yeah, no. So I think, no, no, no. So I believe that it's going to be still probably April-ish or whatever, um, but, I, but I'm not exactly sure, you know, but, but the, the idea was to try to go for the New York show. Either way, whenever, whenever the show is, I, if I'm Rumble, I'm waiting to see when that match is. Mm -hmm. DC said already 
He's going to fight John Jones two more times because, as any confident champion would say, they're going to win this fight. Right. And then John Jones is going to get the trilogy rematch. Right. Um, he needs a rumble. He needs to wait and see what happens with that fight. If 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 DC is able to beat John Jones, there will be a third fight. If DC is not a, able to beat John Jones, that'll be zero and two against John right, Jones. Right. So then Rumble should get the next. Rumble shot. gets the next shot. Right. If if DC does, I mean, if 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 John Jones. Excuse me. If, if if DC wins the fight mm-hmm. and they have a third fight, I would like to see some other interesting matchups. I have to ch- refer to my yeah, notes. Yeah, no, but, you, you Joe Silva. Bitch. Um, exactly. I, I had to look at it. I would like to see the rematch of um, Gustafson. The Gustafson. Well, and John and John, right? Uh, uh, oh. Gu- well, uh, or which one? Rumble and Rumble. Gus? Oh. Rumble. Because it was such a quick fight, yeah. and I feel like where does he go from there? If if if. If Anthony Johnson is not going to be fighting for the belt because they, they already have two more, right. they have another fight, they have a rematch. I'd like to see him rematch Alexander Gustafson. Gustafson's number three in the world right now. I believe uh, Johnson is number two in the yeah. world. He doesn't want to fight anybody too much lower than that. So uh, that'd be an exciting fight for it me would, to see. Well, it would him. be. And, you know, Gus just uh, posted the other day some pictures online. He's, he's like, fully committing to uh, Alliance now, I believe. So he used to do part of his time here uh, in the States, down with Dominic, down at Alliance, and then, you know, part of it in Sweden. So I guess now he's kind of making more of a full-on commitment to go down there, mm-hmm. which is nice. Um, I, I I agree. I would like to see that fight again. You know, it, it's such a tough thing for Gustafson because it's amazing to be that good. And if you look at his fights, how he's, lo- he's lost three out of the last four, I guess, or whatever. But he's so good. But they weren't Ryan Bader losses <laughs> no, at, the, at, the, at the, the peak. They were very right. close, very. exciting, entertaining fights. Yeah, but it's 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 tough. I agree. You know, I'd like to I like to see Rumble active, but I I don't know if you should risk taking another fight before you wait for the title shot. I don't know. Right. Um, it depends I'm, if he wants to be on the sidelines or not right now. Right. And do you think though? Um, do you think DC is going to beat John? It's a tough one. I always back my fellow Lafayette boy. I know you do. You guys are all so good at that. You guys are really- I, I back him 100%, and I will be rooting for him in this fight. Realistically, do I think DC has what it takes to beat John Jones? I don't know if he has it. Yeah. I don't know if he has it. It'll be interesting. I think we'll see in the first round how John Jones reacts after having that time off and after putting on so much muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, if he comes back and he's the same fluid long rangy fighter with 20 extra pounds of muscle mm-hmm. and strength now it's going to be a tough night for dc if d if he's not if he's showing a little bit of ring rust although dominic cruz says there's yeah. no such thing but right. you get back in there and it takes if it's rust or not it takes a while to get your flow if dc who's been a great flow right yeah. now and has like, all the confidence in the world right now which maybe he didn't ha- quite have mm-hmm. that confidence the yeah. first time he fought john jones it could be a different night so well i, I think we'll see it'll be the telltale sign will be round one how is it shaping up? Is John Jones using those long-range kicks and elbows and everything against mm-hmm. DC, or is DC showing that confident fighter that has become uh, the new champion? It'll be interesting, but I think it's going to be a very tough night. Just John Jones has been flawless. He's the number one mm-hmm. pound-for-pound fighter in the world, uh, whatever list you're looking at. And he just, from the videos, he went from a skinny guy <laughs> to a barbarian. Totally, and it just makes it scarier. Well, yeah, when he says that he, he, I guess I, I forget whose article it was. Uh, as we finished the round, of whose article it was, but that he was quoted in saying, um, you know, that he figures he'll maybe do three more fights at light heavy. Gus, DC, well, DC, Gus, and Rumble were the three people that he named. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe it was a tweet he put out. Um, And so, but then, yeah, he could move up to heavyweight. And we know, and we'll get into this later, that he was willing to step up and fight Steve Miocic to save 196, which we will get into. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who, I mean, listen. Obviously, I work with DC all the time, and he is incredibly confident. And DC is one of those guys that you forget. Like, he's, he's such a lovely, goofy guy. And we forget sometimes. I forget sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's, just, that's DC. And right. I see him fight. I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah, he's not like, like he's an great. imposing character. He's no. not six foot three no. or anything. But he's, he's great. Not, but, he, but he's got this, this ability and, and very mentally strong. He's mm-hmm. men- DC has shown in, with everything in life that he's done that he's very mentally strong. And that's what it's going to take to beat yeah. a guy like John Jones. Absolutely. Well, as we get into round three here, let's talk about uh, mm-hmm. the other, um, well, I don't know if this is the other surprise, but uh, the fact that Ben Rothwell submitted Josh Barnett. Now, again, like I literally, after this happened, because I thought that, that this was just insane and there was no, and literally I said, okay, so if, if Bader knocks out, uh, if Bader knocks out Rumble, Rumble, I was like, yeah, kiss your children. The world is spinning off its axis because this kind of crap is not supposed to happen. And again, as we always say in these things, no disclaimer, no disrespect to Ben Rothwell. 
But nobody on the planet saw him submitting Josh Barnett. Nobody. Well, except for him and his judicial coach, apparently. Good for apparently, him. Good for because him. Because they have the secret go-go choke, he was calling it. <laughs> and it's for, from, from my angle, it pretty much just looks like... Uh, a basic grip right here. Yeah. Uh, and, and he just uses this body. He's such a big bodied right. guy that he gets their head sunk in his chest and he uses the weight of his body to just squeeze. And uh, as he was kind of explaining it before, I didn't even know this. And I've Google plotted many yeah. people, but apparently Gogo uh, in Portuguese means Adam's apple. Okay. And so the Gogo choke is just pretty much crushing the Adam's apple. And being such a big man, he's probably put in enough reps with his squeeze where he just has his squeeze down. Yeah. Uh, Marcelo, Marcelo Garcia, another uh, phenomenal jiu jitsu practitioner yeah. has a squeeze just like this that he darts his uh, guillotines everybody with and he's using that same type of choke right here where he's just putting pressure on Adam's apple cutting off the windpipes and you saw it happen like we talked about when he when he choked Matt Matron uh -huh. out when he sprawled out put the uh, the lock on on Matt Matron and and I was shocked I was thinking <laughs> man Matron has no ground game yeah. I was upset I couldn't believe that he tapped so quickly and then you see him tap out somebody who's never been tapped out right. before uh, Josh Barnett has won so many prestigious jiu-jitsu tournaments. All of, he's a friend of mine as yeah. well, and, and my bigger friends that roll with him. I don't roll with him. He's mm. way out of my weight class. <laughs> but my bigger friends that roll with him, Victor Webster, just got his 10 planted black belt. Nice. He always tells me how Barnett just puts a hurting on him. He and finds yes. ways to hurt yes. you. He's not a fun guy to roll with. <laughs> to no. see Ben Rothwell submit him like that is amazing. And did he get a? Did, oh, I apologize. Did he get a bonus for that? Did yeah, you know? he did. He got he a did performance get a bonus. bonus for that. Uh, as did I believe he did. And Rumble got a performance bonus as well. Um, actually, double check that because he should he should have gotten that. Um, so he needs to take part of that bonus and give it to his jiu-jitsu coach out to eat. Right. This is two finishes, two wins, and probably two bonuses that he's got in UFC because of the single choke that his jiu-jitsu coach has drilled into him. So bravo to you, man. That, yeah. that was amazing. Well, the thing is, is I guess... Johnson Rothwell got performance. Yeah, yeah. There you John, go. Yeah, exactly. Another performance um, of the night for him. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Alcantara got the fight of the night there. Mm. So this is the thing. And obviously, um, as some of my haters would like to say, though, they do think I am a man in Dragon that they do think I have an Adam's apple, but I don't. <laughs> um, so I don't know how painful that is. But, but what you're saying, like, it, it, he said something about his knuckles, too. Like, it has to be something incredibly painful for somebody for, like Josh Barnett, who we you know, former champ, who can go through the war to tap that quickly. It's got to just be sheer pain. Pain. Well, sure. and, 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 and there's pretty much three types of chokes. There's uh, 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 cutting off the blood supply, right. the carotid arteries. Or that, you have no choice. It doesn't matter how yeah. tough you are. Your blood stops going to your brain, you pass out. There's a choke where it's cutting off your windpipe and you just can't breathe. And that's the one that you see most people fighting. Uh -huh. They're holding their breath. They're looking for little ways right, to, to create air. To get a little air. bit of space, right? And then there's just a crush. The crush is just pain. <laughs> and some people can fight those as well. Well, there's four, because there's four. There's another one where you just combine all of them. Yeah, and a guy yeah. like Ben Rothwell, who's so big and strong, and when he's putting up, applying the choke, and you saw at the very end, Josh Barnett was trying to escape it. Yeah. He went from uh, having him against the cage, defending the choke, to all of a sudden he aborted that and went to his back. Mm -hmm. And that was him saying, this is my last chance yeah. resort. And that, you said the same thing. It was, it was shocking to see. When, when you saw Josh Barnett go to his back in, in desperate attempt yeah. to get out of it, that's probably because there was no air, there was no blood. It was right. a, probably a mixture of all three of them, and he just couldn't go anymore. He couldn't fight it. Which is crazy. And the other thing now, though, of course, is you know the whole title picture. We knew that Stipe was supposed to get the shot now when Kane, you know, for that, for that millisecond that, uh, that Fabrizio was still in the fight yeah. and that Kane wasn't. Uh, so Stipe was going to get it. So now Ben mm -hmm. Rothwell comes in of the picture and you do have to wonder about the title shot thing you know people talk about Overeem in the mix too but Ben beat Overeem but when you I don't know if you know it's that weird apples to oranges MMA math as to who's ranked higher and I didn't put it in the calculator as to who was rated higher who has the more higher rated wins but I gotta feel like Stipe beating Mark Hunt beating well I mean I said beating Junior Dos Santos but <clears throat> that was a very close decision which he on paper lost you know and granted we know that Alistair beat Junior it's a it's a crazy picture there so who would you put in there for the I mean like do you think Ben made a case I, I think he made a strong case I still see Stipe as, yeah. as, as the next guy um Ben's uh, you know Ben Ben alluded to this earlier uh, after his fight or maybe it was on the broadcast after but he says you know it's the politics mm -hmm. and the politics are a big part of it you know he's not always 
the most exciting fighter, or maybe when you when you imagine the heavyweight champion right. of the world, right. you imagine a Mike Tyson, yeah. you imagine uh, Evander Holyfield, somebody who's ripped up and yeah. the baddest man on the earth. Ben Rothwell is just like this big, <laughs> goofy looking Kenosha. giant I mean, no, you know, with, with a, a yeah. hilarious laugh. But he is one of the meanest people, and he's one of the guys that he may not physically be chiseled right. and have the, the the sharpest striking or right. anything, but he gets the job done, and he he takes a lot of jam damage in the process mm -hmm. of doing it. But he always gets the job done, and he's just a mean guy to fight. So I, if Ben would get a title shot in the near future, man, I would be super happy for him because he's earned it. He's beat some big names, yeah. and and. And he brings exciting fights. If you love him or hate him, if, if, even if he's not your favorite fighter, when he fights, it's a back-and-forth mm -hmm. fight. He's not scared to take damage, and he puts it all on the line. Well, speaking of uh, uh, whether he's your favorite fighter or not, uh, round four here, Sage Northcutt. So... Super Sage, 19 years old, has uh, had three fights in the UFC, and this was the first time that he had lost, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. took the fight uh, at 170 pounds this time, got choked out. Uh, after winning um, uh, round one, you know, people gave, gave, gave round one to him, yeah, because it was second round that this mm -hmm. happened. So, he, I was looking at the cards, so he got round one. Same thing, like, Josh Barnett actually had round one in all the cards for Yeah, in, he, in he was fight. winning, so, yeah. yeah. So, um, long story short, Sage choked out, uh, or tapped out to a... <laughs> To it. A head and arm well, choke. This is what arm I'm asking. Triangle. This is what I'm asking, fighter. Was it was it a choke or was it a setup to a choke? You know, every I was watching the breakdown that Brian Stan did afterwards, and he talked about how uh, uh, Sage's legs were elevated. You know, he was he, he he wasn't grounding himself. He wasn't using his hips uh, to to get out of there. And you know, most of us know enough about his admission that that didn't look like something that you should be finished with. So I want to know, for your perspective, did, did, what did you take to? It, it definitely looked odd, and I yeah. think even during the broadcast, you might have heard was it was it Joe Rogan or, or whomever was speaking saying that like you know they didn't really allude to like <laughs> like he's about to get finished. They were like, no. okay, he should be fine right, from here. Right, right. And the next thing you know, he was tapping. Uh, the, the, he got finished prematurely. He was setting up the submission. Right. He was in a tight spot, but. He had the he he had the, the the squeeze was right here underneath right. the arm and typically you want to have them up here where it's nice and tight and you can really get the, if you're put applying the choke the head and arm choke you almost want your forehead on the mat yeah and 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 uh, but don't you also need your body if for for Barbarina it needs to be in a different position you normally want to be yeah. in full side control yeah. and maybe even a knee on the belly to give you a little more leverage and it's uncomfortable he didn't even have that he still ha he still was caught in half guard uh, stage still had the lockdown yeah. in on him and and stage. I, I, this is the thing. He, uh, the, uh, excuse me, tell me the guy's name who beat Sage again. Brian Barberina. Brian Barberina. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. Vinny um, Barberino. I'm sorry if anybody wants to come back on her. It's Vinny Barberino. Brian said after the fight that he gets this in training a lot. Yeah. So I can't put it past him that maybe it was tighter than it looked because even though it wasn't fully locked in in, in hindsight of, of what is a, 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 a clean submission it wasn't yet right. a clean submission he was still setting it up but he says he gets the submission a lot so maybe that was a, an, a, an angle that he mm -hmm. uses a lot maybe this was kind of an adjustment that he's made in his game so maybe that was one of his go-to moves right. I don't know but typically that is not locked in right there he, he didn't clear half guard yet so he was still locked in he didn't have the leverage because usually once you have it locked in I want to transition counterclockwise or clockwise mm -hmm. away from the body of the whoever I'm choking I want my body to get away from them he was right on top of him right. so he didn't have that leverage but he just squeezed sage usually we say this to defend you want to try to answer the phone or use your hand to create distance mm -hmm. to create it just create a little space right here but he wasn't doing any of that he let he left his arm right here he didn't try to grab his legs to, to create right. a little space right here to let the artery to allow it to breathe blood to flow or even he, shouldn't couldn't he have unlocked his legs to at least he's like listen I'm getting choked maybe I don't want to hold him in half guard anymore maybe at least if I can plant my feet work my hips and do well, something I, th I think the one thing that he was thinking was I don't want to let him go because if I let go of my half guard he's allowed to, to advance into side control and then he's able to work the leverage the clockwise choke which is the finishing move so he was somewhat doing the right thing keeping him in half guard but he wasn't applying any of the other but there's uh, no defenses. other defense right and, and, it, and you could see right away as soon as he felt <laughs> as soon as he felt the lock come on it looked like he tapped and the ref <laughs> looked and like are you tapping because normally you right. you tap three times yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was almost like a half punch tap he tapped twice and then he then he pounded his, uh, uh, his chest again yeah. and he stopped it but you know the thing with sage is he is going to get better it's not like he went in there and got knocked unconscious yeah. he he took little damage and they always say in jujitsu 
tapping is not a bad thing. You're not taking damage, you're not passing out, and you could learn from your mistakes. So he's gonna learn from this. I wouldn't be surprised if he went in the back with his coaches and drilled this 20 times on the proper defense now, and now he's gonna have this, this experience going into the next fight. Yeah, but were you one of those people that celebrated his loss? I mean, you're a fellow fighter. Uh, he makes 40,000 to show up and fight, and right. that's his third fight. There's a lot of anger. There was a lot of happiness at, uh, on the part of, of, of other fighters on Twitter and stuff talking about how happy they were that he lost. So for you, is it something that you're happy that the guy lost? There was a lot of mixed feelings yeah. watching Sage fight for me and for all the fighters personally. This is the thing. I don't think anybody has any vendetta against Sage. Mm -hmm. He's a good guy. I met him in Houston. He's a really good kid. Obviously, he answers everybody yes, sir. <laughs> he's not like a, he's not talking Super shit to anyone. Excited. Why no, would you not like friendly. him? The thing that that people have against Sage is the favoritism that the UFC yeah. has given him. And it's tough for fighters. I'm, I'm, I'm going into my sixth fight in, the UFC, in my UFC career. I've only been in UFC a year and a half, but mm -hmm. still, I've worked very hard and I've fought a lot of tough opponents. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had anything handed to me. And I'm still on that pay scale, working and fighting, and my pay scale goes up little by little mm -hmm. by little. Sage has fought two mediocre opponents in his first two mm -hmm. fights and he's already at a pay scale where fighters who have been fighting in the UFC for four or five years yeah. have got. So that's where the resentment comes in the part of Sage Northcutt. So some people wanted to see him lose not because they don't like Sage personally. It's just they want to see him be where he deserves and have to work his way up just like yeah. everybody else. No, well, that, and that makes sense because I don't fault somebody, same thing with Paige or whatever. I don't fault somebody for making the best of the position they're Anybody given. would take it. Exactly. Anybody would do so the if same you're, thing. If you're offered the quote-unquote hype train, you should try to ride it. And like you said, he was always very polite. Uh, uh, and everything that you have to do with him, he's actually an incredibly likable person. Um, and he's only 19. So I think he'll be back. I, I, um, I want to see, just to finish on this, I want to see, we talked about Justin Tim, like even like a, a, a Hulk Hogan, <laughs> I would think once he gets a lot of like enemies, I think he should shave his head. Maybe if he can grow a beard, yeah. like a dark no, beard, yeah, yeah, yeah. he could become like a Hollywood Hulk. Have be play the bad guy he role. Could. I think he would kill it. Or Justin Timberlake with the curls. The, once Justin shaved the curls, he became you know everybody like Justin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the route you need to take, Sage. Shave the, the <laughs> head. Get rid of the highlights. Stop saying yes, sir. No more smiling. Yeah. Have a little edge. Maybe hang Wait, out with Connor for the weekend. Oh well, God, don't do that. <laughs> I'm what are corrupt. You I'm, you. Hurt the boy. I'm corrupting. He's such a positive guy, but yeah, I just want to see him a little a bit of an edge. And you know what? Everybody yeah. likes like like kind of a, a comeback story. Yeah, so for sure. We'll see, well, the next. It, we'll see more of him. I, I yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see what develops. Um, you know, if Connor loses his next fight against Rafael dos Anjos, you know, people like to talk about the whole hype train being derailed of all the three. But we'll see what happens. Right. But but here we are in round five. And speaking of of derails, derailing the train coming off the track. You have seen 196. No longer, um, you know, uh, I'm actually doing these shows for, for, well, now they're all for Fox. I was doing, you know, working this weekend. We were going to have the pay-per-view and all this, but now it's not. Uh, we were literally at lunch with um, Josh Barnett um, when news broke that Fabricio was also dropping out. Right. Obviously, we know the timeline that Kane was hurt and had to pull out of the fight. And then recent, not, not long after, Fabricio did. Uh, and we were with Josh. You know, I'm just, we, Wade and I were filming with Fabricio Verdum few days prior to this, okay, we saw that he was injured. So anybody mm. out there that thinks, this bull crap, and he told me he's just, he, he's afraid, he's, dude was injured. Uh, we, saw, we saw him training with Cobrinha. I know it for a fact. So literally we're at lunch, and I get this text uh, with Fabrizio, and he's talking about what's happening. And so uh, certainly, you know, there's other journalists at the table that are speculating, oh, he's just this, he's average. No, dude was hurt. <laughs> um but, but I think the problem is, is that people are saying, oh, so he was hurt enough to fight Kane, but not hurt enough to fight Steve Bamiocic. Totally different fighter. Totally different to see a guy that you've never fought before, whereas Kane, you know the recipe right. already. You train for a very sp specific kind of person. And there's a lot more to lose in losing to Stipe than there is to Kane. I agree, 100%. It was a lose-lose situation for yeah. him, in his mind at least. He was injured, he wasn't fighting 100%, and now he's fighting a younger, fresh, change of opponent yeah. guy with less of a name. It's not gonna really get him anywhere. Mm -mm. Uh, it, Everybody's always going to have mixed feelings on this when, when a fighter pulls out, but unless you're a fighter, unless you're in there training on the day to day basis, you don't know how often we wake up and our knees are messed up, mm -hmm. or our back's tight, or our neck's jammed, or something more severe like our ribs popped out or a broken finger, but we still have to fight. And, and sometimes people 
are the company man. They go and they do what they need to do and then sometimes people make the smarter decisions for themselves um, a la um, Dustin Poirier yeah, did right. in his fight and he got a lot of shit for it but you know what? He's looking out for his career and he made the good decision at the end. He mm -hmm. came back, had a, a phenomenal performance. Win fight. Yep. Won the fight. He made the right decision and, and, and I think that's what he was doing. Uh, um, when we talk about Verdum, he yep. knew that he wasn't 100% healthy and the change of opponent in a different style with a lesser of a name, he figured, you know what? It's not worth it. I'll, I'll wait on it. He's going to get a little a little flag from it. Mm -hmm. But then if he comes back and has a, a, a phenomenal performance, it was all worth it. It was a smart business decision. Yeah, well, and the thing that was killing me was, you know, Josh right away said, I'll step in and I'll fight. Um, and even for, for see, but the, the thing that was killing me was people were like, yeah, why do you have these other guys go in and step in and fight for an interim title? Slow down. You can't Why would it be an interim strip, title? You're not going to strip Why the, the hell was it an interim title? Why do people even throw that word around? Mm. What, what, what fight? Fabricio fought Mark Hunt when he wasn't supposed to. He was supposed to be fighting Kane. He fights Kane, then beats him. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if you don't like him. Which is crazy because the guy is fantastic. I know you know him a little bit, right? You see him around something. Fabricio yeah. is a lovely guy. Uh, so the fact that some people are just really... I, I think people are just really mad that he's the champ. And I, but the whole interim thing I did was very confusing to me. Yeah, it didn't make any sense to me either. Um, <laughs> you, you mentioned John Jones yeah, said yeah, he, he yeah, might yeah, do it. Yeah, and although right, he would fight Steve, but yeah, they sound time. like fun, exciting fights. You still have to stick to the guidelines. And, and, and somebody's yeah. the champ. They're injured. They're gonna wait a little bit. They right. will be back. We will have another exciting fight. We just have to wait a little longer. Well, and you didn't you have a fight that you were gonna fight in Louisiana, right? You wanted to be on that card, but exactly. then you were injured, right? So how, uh, you know, obviously you're you're the guy who really has to do this for a living like how far does it have to go before you have to pick up the, the phone and call your management and be like look i i thought i could push through it but i can't like how you know as a fighter this is the worst phone call you have to make in the yeah. world it really is you're training and you, you've already flipped the switch you're already in that mindset where you're 100 focused getting better every day you've already let your friends and family know you're fighting they're buying tickets the sponsorships are coming in and this ball is just getting bigger and bigger and rolling and rolling yeah. and the last thing you want to do is have to derail it and put the brace on and say you know what as excited I am as I am for this you know for me I had to have elbow surgery yeah. and, and I tried to train with it as much as I could but it got to the point where every time I hit the ground I was in excruciating pain my elbow I was draining it every single day oh. and it got to the point where like look if I, this was a week before the fight, maybe I could have toughed it out. But when I have eight weeks to train with this twice a day, <laughs> there is no way I'm going to make it to my camp um, right. healthy, much less probably get an even, even more injuries. So I had to pull out. And, and I can tell you, if you're not a fighter, you could talk down on fighters that have to pull out of fights. But it is the worst thing in the world for them. I yeah. promise you, having to call your manager and tell them that you can't fight and then and then seeing the backlash on social media and your friends and family calling and asking if you're okay, it, it's, it's a very sad day for a fighter. So future notice, <laughs> when guys pull out of fights, right. Give him a little picker up. Yeah, <laughs> Pick yeah. Up. You're not. You're not. Don't a, troll him. You're okay? not a scared little bitch. Yeah. You're not. Uh, We're injured. You know, right. We're well, injured. well, and the other thing that I always think about is too is okay. Granted, you know, Fabricio, some, you know, is, is making more, but and not to put you on blast, but it's not like you're making a hundred k. You know, you're making. You you need that money to live. A lot of these guys need that mm -hmm. money. So for them to pull out, it's like, dude, they, they wouldn't do it unless it was radically like have to. That's have exactly to. right. We want this. You know? money we're only fighting yeah. three or four times a year so unless we have things going on outside of the cage mm -hmm. we're only getting paid three or four times a year so yeah. to think that well we didn't want to fight because we're scared we're professional fighters nervousness excitement scared that all comes in with fighting but yeah. this is our job so we do it so you can't say this guy was scared to fight this guy we we go and we fight because that's our job that's right. what we're trained to do if we think that it's a bad business decision because i'm in too much pain or i'm not going to be able to perform and get the win mm -hmm. then that's when your manager the fighter in us almost always wants to fight want, but yeah, a lot of right, times right. it's it's us talking to our manager and if we have a good manager we tell them look I could fight, but I'm at 70%. Right. And if your manager assesses the situation and says 70% is not enough to beat this guy at no. his highest level, yes. then he's looking out for you and he's a good manager and then that's when you have to cancel the fight. Well, yeah, and you know, the thing is too, is obviously you guys are all banged up there a little bit. Um, 
But, you know, we and, and we don't know. We sit there and like, oh, all it is is a little rib injury or all it is. <laughs> a little but rib. I don't know. But like you said, you can't, you can't even train. You can't run, yeah. right? Because the impact of running will hurt it. Then you can't wrestle. Then guys that are this, cutting weight, that, especially yeah. guys that have those yeah. heavy weight cuts. And like uh, Rampage Jackson, yeah. the one he fought in Japan, Ryan Bader, I believe yep. it was, he couldn't run or anything. Like if you're trying to cut 25 pounds and you can't even go on a run or anything, that's another. That's mm-hmm. just another element mm-hmm. to the situation. Yeah, but it's, it's tough. It's tough. Speaking of weight, and we, we, we finished up our round, but I have a question for you getting back to the whole Rumble thing. Mm. Can you believe he at one point was in your weight class? It, it, dude, could you imagine? It is amazing. At this point, like when you see him walking into the cage, you'd be like, dude, that guy would have been standing across from me. I think about that every time I see him <laughs> fight insane. because my buddy uh, Dan Hardy, who fought Rumble mm-hmm. Johnson, Love you know, Hardy. he had a couple losses and people gave him a lot of shit for that. But right. look at who he lost to. He lost to George St. Pierre, Carlos Condit, Rumble Johnson. Yeah. Maybe one other person, but it, it, he fought crazy <laughs> high-level guys, and Rumble Johnson is one of them. And every time yeah. you see him at 205, the guy doesn't have a wrinkle on his body. <laughs> no, it's it's like he's he, at 205, he's busting out of his skin. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like he's barely making 205. <laughs> And he's so explosive. He carries that power yeah. with him even more. Yeah, no, he well, he actually weighed it in his pants the other day. So this time, you know, his weight was... Oh, the, so he the was way under. Oh, yeah, no, because weight obviously was the big thing with him before, which is the reason he got cut, you know, before the fight with Vitor, he didn't make weight and all this. But yeah, so he weighed in actually in pants the other day. So I, it's something, whatever it is now. Whatever they're eating. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to give you a little shout out, Romo Johnson. Uh, he, he he used to at least breed bull, uh, pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, let me tell you, still does. this guy's pit bulls look just like him at 205. His pit bulls are the biggest pit bulls you've, right. I've ever seen in my life. Their head, their heads are enormous. Their bodies are gigantic. And uh, I get it, man. I see, I see his pit bulls. I see him. And I don't know what Rumble dog farts. food they're eating over there, but they're all beasts. Oh my God. Yeah, they really are. They really are. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And now the whole thing's shifted. And now 196 is uh, a fight now, like we said, in 197 is, is this and that uh, and all that. So it's interesting. But uh, but thank you for at least putting the stamp on that because people love to talk crap uh, to you guys for, for pulling out of a fight. Yeah. And uh, I, I would imagine, yeah, that's not something uh, you ever want to do. So so there we have it. So listen, um, coming up, yeah, this weekend. So actually, who, who you know, now that we have Wonder Boy and Johnny Hendricks as a main event, I'll just yeah. get your thoughts on this before we have the fight. Uh, what do you like about that matchup? Who, who do you think has the edge? Well, I, I just I'm excited for for Wonder Boy. I'm yeah. excited for him to get this opportunity to headline a, a card against a former champion. You like just, that kind of flashy striker? That's more your that's maybe. More that's fun. it. I'm, I'm I'm I always lean for the striker, yeah, lean yeah, towards yeah. that way. Uh, you know, I've 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 met um, Wonder Boy a couple of times. He's a really really good guy, man. Yeah. He's a southern guy. He's kind of a good old boy, man. Yeah, he just he likes to, He trains near his house. His family. He's got dogs and he rides four wheelers and he's really just a good old boy with phenomenal striking mm-hmm. and and I'll be really curious to see if the wrestling power size of Johnny Hendrix what he's able to do against the long rangy yeah. striking of Wonderboy man but I see Wonderboy taking this I see him I see him doing something you know on a landing one of those kicks he has really tricky kicks mm-hmm. where his kicks his kicks shadow his punches, and that's how he lands a lot of them. He'll throw the punch just to, 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 to take you, to distract you and let the kick finish after. Yeah. And um, I kind of see him landing a nice head kick on Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, I think so. You know, obviously we saw in the Jake Ellenberger fight that, you know, you, you got to move. You got to move when you're fighting Wonder Boy. And it'll be interesting to see if Johnny can keep up a pace of movement and staying out of the way. Mm-hmm. Because as we know, I mean, and again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to harsh on the guy, but Johnny has had the weight issues, which makes people think he has car- uh, cardio and endurance issues mm-hmm. and uh and, and we'll see how that goes i, I see i see wonder boy too i you see, see it as well. i do i do i think he's in the zone i'll, I'll be interested in to zone. see wonder boy has a technique that he uses it's kind of like a sidekick or a, mm-hmm. it's a mixture between like a front kick or a teep as you say in muay thai yeah. but he throws more of like a karate sidekick and 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 it makes it so if you go against somebody who's really good at it like he is it makes it so difficult to to cover i mean yeah. to shoot in to, to cover right. range and so i'll be interested to see he he uses that effectively every single fight but is he able to use that effectively mm-hmm. against a guy a wrestler right. or is he or is he going to be too hesitant 
scared to get taken down. Right, because that's the whole thing, right? You don't want to throw up a leg. Don't want to put a leg up <laughs> right, and get right, it caught, right. and the next thing you know, you're on the back with the, with an amazing yeah, wrestler on top. I of know. It. Well, so I mean, but yeah, it's about the takedown defense. It's about using a, that that distance maybe to be your defense. I don't know. I think it's it'll be successful, but it'll be exciting to it's see this be weekend. Interesting. But you're right. He is another nice, young, polite man. So is Johnny. Johnny's a Johnny's a yeah. He's a another. Good old, he's old a good old boy. Johnny's your good old. He's boy. He's got a right badass truck. Johnny, you got a badass truck, <laughs> man. <laughs> and a left hand. <laughs> and a left hand. Well, very nice. So um, your schedule this week. How much uh, today was today was rest. Wrestling, right? So money's wrestling. Tomorrow's the Muay Thai again. We're, and we, we will be putting an interview out that we did with you. And your training was sick. It's going to be good. You guys put in real work over they there. They came to Saxon Muay Thai, my, my Muay Thai gym. We killed it. Put in yeah. a light workout, but they were impressed. That's not even a hard yeah, workout. Well, it was, no, yeah, look at you. Yeah, that was <laughs> No, good. I was exhausted. I was exhausted. <laughs> it was a good day. It was good. It was, but like I was saying, we, you know, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of workout. When the same thing happens whenever we go to Kings, there's something about a Muay Thai workout that I'm like, God, why didn't yeah. I bring some stuff? Like, I'm not even <laughs> pretending that I know how to do that. I can kick because I played soccer for so long, and yeah. I, I I have a feeling that I could drop a pretty sweet elbow. Um, <laughs> but um, but but it just always looks so fun. So you guys had nice energy there, so that was cool. Yeah, that was, a good that day. was cool. Um, nice, nice, nice. So on social media, where can people find you? As always, AlanJoban.com, Facebook, Twitter, um, and again, I've been saying this the last couple of weeks, yeah. but Alan-Joban.com is my website. It's a great website. I'm very happy with it. It's going to be Alan Joban. Dot com pretty soon. Yeah. I'm taking that dash out of there, but check it out, man. It's got everything going on uh, inside and outside of the cage, and I have some really exciting stuff coming up in the next few weeks and months outside of the cage mm-hmm. uh, that uh, I'll get back with you soon on the next one. Cool, very nice. Uh, and I just, folks, isn't this is amazing? We just taught Alan about the block button on Twitter. So, oh yes, yeah. <laughs> so if you love to hate on him, you better get it over with soon because I'm pretty sure that, uh, that you're gonna, gonna be blocked. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I didn't know about this, but and I'll loan you the picture of DC because we were we were doing a, a post fight show one time and he was we were asking questions and now there's this great graphic of DC blocked. Uh, so oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that him learning about it as well? No, or? he was just talking about because somebody was asking yeah. a question about Kane and he was like, "How could you ask me this ridiculous blocked?" Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. It, it became this. And great. I think John Jones ended up having a field day with that <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> as he uh, as he always does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm uh, on Instagram. I'm KB Heat. You can follow. Follow me on Twitter at Karen Bryant. On YouTube, we have the Karen Bryant channel and also at Mahit and also on Facebook at Mahit. Last thing I wanted to get your opinion on before we go, the news broke today that uh, Benson Henderson signed with Bellator. I didn't. Did I, yes, I did. Look at this. Is this breaking news? This is breaking news. The bottom yeah. of the screen, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have been a ticker. Uh, yeah, he signed with Bellator. I'm sad. I'm sad. You know, yeah. congrats to Bellator for, for putting their money up. Mm-hmm. But uh, it'll be sad, man, not to see Benson in the cage. We saw him. We saw him uh, giving Sage a couple yeah. words of encouragement yeah. after the fight. Benson's always been a great champion, and mm-hmm. and I will always remember him. I don't know why, not for his title fights, but when he stepped up to welterweight and when he brought when he fought Brandon Thatch yeah. in the main event, uh, I was one of those people that were almost scared for him. Brandon Thatch is a huge Dang. welterweight. Benson Henderson <laughs> went in there and fought an amazing yeah. fight and got the job done, and 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 that's the fight that I always remember him yeah. in the UFC for. Yeah. So Benson, thank you for uh, thank you for the good times. Um, best of luck to you. I know Josh Thompson's excited to have him over there, so maybe yeah, right. those, you know, but uh, but but good for him. So anyway, thanks for listening. You can find this uh, on the audio version as well. Uh, we got links to Stitcher and iTunes, so you can just go to emmyheat.com forward slash podcast. Uh, so there we have it. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys.